Reflection, Chapter 15 Shishi pounced in front of them, making the earth shatter, shudder from the impact of his landing. I told you the great guardian of the Lee family would not be defeated by a pack of demons, Shishi proclaimed. Mulan was nearly speechless. You're back! Of course I'm back. Did you expect to make it out of Dayu without me? Overcome with relief, Mulan embraced the lion. We thought you were dead. Her hug caught Shishi off guard. Careful with the mane. He made a face and shook his hair until Mulan had to back away. It's still in shreds after what you did to it. Sorry. How did you escape the demons? Shang asked. Humph. Those squirrels are no match for the great stone lions such as myself. Shishi squared her shoulders proudly. Oh, there were hundreds of them, maybe thousands even. Shang raised an eyebrow. Thousands? Fine, a hundred. Don't interrupt. A lion always lands on his feet, and when I did, I ripped their spears apart with my jaws and roared my mightiest roar. Most of them ran away after that. Then I chased the rest down the mountain of knives until there was nowhere to go. Those gloating fools thought they had me, but I spied a portal underneath one of the knives. It led me here, to level 51. Level 51, Mulan thought. Still a long way to go. Shishi's tail swirled behind him as he circled Mulan and Shang. I must say, I'm surprised to see you two loitering about. Why are you still here? I told you to hurry. This area is rife with ghosts. We don't see any, she insisted. How did you— That's odd, the Lion Guardian interrupted. I could have sworn that I'd heard that many ghosts amass just below this mountain. Mulan froze, hearing the whispers now. They were faint, but getting closer. And worse, there were many of them. What was that sound? Came whispers from the knives. It sounded like a lion. An angry voice. It woke me. It's the outsider. The outsider? The boy with no name. Find him. Tell the others. The ghosts gilded up the mountain, their movement causing a gust in the air and making the knives whistle. A chorus of harsh squeaks and shrieks rippled the air, unlike the ones Mulan had encountered on the bridge of the helplessness. These ghosts looked dangerous and angry. A few were decapitated and carried their heads under their arms. Others were missing eyes and fingers and teeth. Their auras were all varying shades of red. Mulan, Shang, and Shishi backed up into the grass, but it was too late. Before they could get any further, a band of ghosts blocked their path. The outsider from the real world, rasped one of the bandit ghosts. He grinned at Mulan, revealing his missing front teeth. I heard about him. He crossed the bridge. He wouldn't heed the warnings. Another bandit ghost appeared. His belt was lined with a dozen knives, and he was missing his fourth finger and left eye. You know what we do to those who don't heed our warnings? Call the others. Tell them we found the trespasser. Laughter, it rang across the knives, bouncing off them like bells that chimed far, far into the distance, while also sinking into Mulan's bones. The ghosts scattered across the mountain, retrieving their knives and daggers. Ah, my blade hadn't sung with the flesh of a mortal man since I was alive, one said, sharpening his knife against e each other. Don't run, outsider. We'll make you one of us in due time. The ghosts laughed, as they crowded together blood and death singing in their hollow eyes. A pang of dread sharpened at the bit of Mulan's stomach. Bandits and murderers, Mulan murmured, repeating Shishi's warning. And just her luck, they were all after her.